season. You can pre-order it now. Hey, if you do that, uh, click on my affiliate link in the description below. I make a small commission when you do that. Uh, and by the way, there's a money back guarantee. You have 30 days to decide after it ships to you whether you like it or not. So that that's nice. Uh, and today we're doing a raw edit. I want to show you the power of Luminar AI working with templates and then making your own adjustments. It's going to be very interesting. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here I am in a Luminar AI. Now this is a raw image, no edit done to it so far. I just want to see what a quick edit would be like on this image. It's a uh, shot this recently. It's not a great image by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, some nice fall color, I think, but and a cornfield, but nothing great. But let's just do a fast edit on this and see what we can do. Now, for this photo, it chooses Easy Landscapes, Black and White, Timeless Beauty, and it chooses Easy Portraits. I don't know why it chooses Easy Portraits, but it does. Anyway, Easy Landscapes. And if I click on Easy Landscapes, I have this choice, these choices here, okay? And, of course, I don't want a black and white. That would be this noir scape right here. So let's try Clean Light on here. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, let's try long exposure. That's okay. Of course, it's not a sunset, snowfall, or forest stream. So let me go back. And let's go under the essentials here under landscape. And this is probably where I would start with an image like this under, under uh, the essentials. And I would probably either use uh, probably maybe clear and sharp. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. I just don't like it. It's too sharp for me. Here's a fast fix. I would probably use either fast fix or simple. So I think simple is a good starting point. When I go between simple and fast fix, fast fix looks like it's using some, I'm going to guess it's using maybe some of the landscape adjustments, maybe some golden hour. And I may want to go that way, but I think I would start out with simple because I don't really know which direction I want to take this. And and I basically want to do a lot of the editing myself. So I think this would be a good starting point. So let's choose simple. Notice in the bottom right hand corner of the interface, we have a slider here. This is an opacity slider. So you can pull back any of the templates adjustments if you don't want to use them at full strength. If we click the eye here, here's the before and here's the after. So I think it's a nice starting point. It's a good start for me. So now I'm going to go ahead and click edit, and then we'll see where we can go from here. We're starting out in the essentials group here, and composition AI is the first tool. So let's give it a try, see what we get. The composition's okay in this image, but let's see what composition AI can do. So let's click this on. Now I'm going to keep it in the original aspect ratio. If you click this drop down, you can change the aspect ratio to whatever you want. But I want the original aspect ratio. Uh, we have perspective, so this has like an auto straightening if you click this. It'll straighten out your image, and I think that looks good. I'm not going to rotate it or flip it or do anything like that. I think that looks okay. Uh, now let's click on uh, composition and see what kind of a composition it gives us. Now it looks pretty good. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to accept that. I'm going to type my return key, and that accepts that composition. Whatever you see highlighted in this uh, essentials group, these are the adjustments that that template has used, okay? So let's start out with light and see what it does. Now, we can look at the temperature. It is as shot, so I have a Canon 5D Mark II, and it does a pretty good job. I usually set it for auto white balance, and I'm usually pretty happy with it. Sometimes I'll warm it up a little bit, but I like it. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. Okay, the exposure is looking good. Now, this setting gave it a little bit of smart contrast, so we can give it some more if we think we need it. But yeah, I'll just give it just a little bit more. And it's pulled my highlights back to like a minus 30. And then we can play with this. You know, we don't have to accept that template adjustments. We can play around with it. That looks pretty good. And my shadows are opened up a little bit to 15. And I like that. And then we have black and whites here. So we are blacks and whites. So we can set a white and black point. Now it's set a white point here for me. So I'm going to leave that where it is. I think it looks good. And we have curves here. We can make some curves adjustments if we need to. But that's the light tool that it's used. Now let's go under Structure AI. It's done something here. It's about my Structure AI up to a 25. We can give it a little bit more if we want to. And I think I might. I might just give it a little bit more. And remember, we're using the simple uh, template. And it's, it's a good starting point for us, I think. Especially for the landscape here. 
and nothing in color, and it's used landscape. Now, it did use a little bit of golden hour here. So let's see what happens if we give it a little bit more golden hour. Yeah, I think a little bit more golden hour will look really nice, especially on these trees. Really nice. Let's try the uh, foliage enhancer. Okay, it's, it's going to work with the greens and things like that on the grass. We can make our grass a little more vibrant here. And that looks pretty good. Now, under advanced settings, we have some, uh, we have a hue adjustment. So we can uh, work with the hue of that grass there. You know, if it's too green or whatever, we can warm it up. And I think right, right about there looks pretty good. And of course, we always have these toggles right here. You can toggle this on and off. We can do layer masking on any of these tools as well if we need to. The preset's also given us a little bit of dehazing. It's taken it up to a five, and that looks pretty good. Let's just move it up a little more and see what it does. Yeah, I think that five is good. I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, let's go to our color and see if we want to mess with the color any. We have a remove color cast uh, slider here if we need to. We have our HSL tool in here if we want to work on our colors and things. Uh, the vibrance is at zero. Let's see what happens if we give it a little bit of vibrance. I usually like to add a little vibrance to my landscape. Now that landscape adjustment is added some extra color, so I don't want to go too crazy here. So I might just give it a little bit of vibrance. Let's toggle this on and off. Here's off. Here's on. Yeah, it's not too strong. Let's give it a little bit more. Toggle this one more time. There's off and here's on. Okay, pretty good. I might just pull it back a little bit. Saturation's good. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to work with the HSL for now. Let's go to details. See if we want to do anything with details. Uh, before I do that, though, let's go into denoise. Let's go ahead and zoom into 100% here and see what we got here as well as far as noise. There's a little bit of noise in here, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of noise reduction. Normally, I like to use like Topaz the Noise AI or uh, DxO Photo Labs uh, Deep Prime Noise Reduction, but I'm just going to go with this noise uh, reduction in here for now. Color noise looks pretty good. I might just increase it just a little bit, not much. Okay, and I think that looks good. Let's go to Details, and we're zoomed into 100%. And so we can play with our small details first. Little bit of small detail here. I'm not going to go too crazy here. Let's work with our medium details. Let's give it a little medium detail. That looks pretty good. How about just a tiny bit of large detail? That looks really nice. I might just give it a little bit of sharpening here. Not too much. And I think that looks really good. Let's go back to full screen. Okay, so far so good, and oh, you know what? I did not mess with my Enhance AI, and I truly love Enhance AI, and inside it we have Accent AI and Sky Enhancer AI. But notice something interesting here. On this template, Simple, it's not highlighted, meaning they have not made an adjustment, or have they? Notice one thing, Accent, Accent AI is set to 25, but the uh, toggle switch is actually shutting it off. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So that's pretty interesting. So that adds a little bit of Accent AI at 25, which looks really good. And I think I'm going to leave it there. Let me see what happens if I add a little bit more. Yeah, I might just add just a tiny smidge more. Now let's play with the uh, Sky Enhancer and see what we can get with it. Yeah, I'm going to give that a little bit of Sky Enhancement. I think that's really helping that Sky out. I think right there... Let's take a look at, here's the before, and here's the after. Yeah, so that's looking really good. Man, I don't want to leave Enhance AI out of my mix here. Let's see where we've come from so far. So we've come from here, and went to here. And, you know, that's a pretty good edit right there. A pretty good basic edit. And today I really just wanted to put Luminar AI through the paces on a really quick, fast edit. You know, more of a starting point. But let me do one last thing. Let's go to the Pro tab section here. Let's go under Optics and make sure I have my Auto Distortion Corrections turned on for my lens and my Remove Chromatic Aberration, something I do for all of my images. 
But I think for right now, I'm going to stop. I'm satisfied with my basic starting adjustment here. It was pretty fast and painless. I'm liking the new Luminar AI. Hey, let me know what you think in the uh, comments section below. If you have any questions or comments on Luminar AI, I'd love to hear what you're thinking about it. Now, let's take a look. We've come from here and we've went to here. So pretty painless, pretty quick, pretty easy. I started out with that simple adjustment. I'm really happy with it. Now, at this point, we could just go ahead and close Luminar down, or I don't have to save anything. I could go and start another image if I wanted to. And then when I come back to this image, I can just pick up where I left off. Because remember, Luminar AI is a non-destructive workflow. Well, there you go, Luminar AI. I just wanted to do a fast edit today uh, just to see, you know, what the workflow would be like for me. And uh, these are my results. It was pretty easy to do. Again, if you have comments and questions, please leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly.